In most wells, the owner orders a well log. A well log can reveal whether there is enough oil or gas in a formation to go to the expense of running and cementing production casing to complete the well. To log a well, the well owner usually calls a well logging company. On land rigs, the logging company sends a truck-mounted logging unit to the well. Offshore, the logging unit is usually permanently installed on the rig. In either case, the logging unit lowers a logging tool on conductive wireline into the well to the depth of investigation. The unit then reels in the tool. As the tool comes up the hole, it detects certain aspects of the formations it passes. It sends this information up the conductive wireline to the surface. On the surface, computers in the logging unit record the information. The computers then print out the information, print a log that the well owner can examine. Often, the log gives enough information for the well owner to determine whether oil or gas exists in the formation. Here's a logging truck. It contains the computers, the wireline on a reel, and the controls that make the logging operation work. Offshore, instead of a truck, the equipment is installed in a small house, a logging unit. The logging unit, whether truck-mounted or skid-mounted, houses conductive wireline on a reel. Wireline controls, which allow an operator to lower, stop, and raise the wireline, and the computers that record and display the information relayed from the logging tool through the conductive wireline. The well owner can choose from many types of logging tools. Plus, the owner can run some of the tools in combination. Logging companies group logging tools into four broad areas. Electric nuclear, sonic, and other. Electric logging tools measure and record certain electrical properties of the formation. This is a recording, a log made by an electric logging tool as it came up out of the well past the formation. The squiggles on the log are called curves. Notice that the curves move to the left and to the right on the log. This is called deflection. A person familiar with these curves can look at the way they deflect and learn a lot about the formations. A basic premise of the simplest electric logs is that salt water conducts electricity considerably better than oil. Thus, a formation containing oil deflects the log's curve different from a formation containing salt water. A nuclear log sometimes called a radioactive log, looks a lot like an electric log because it has curves that deflect left and right. Nuclear logs measure either natural or induced radiation in the formation. Natural radiation can indicate the type of rock and its density. Bombarding the formation with a low-level radioactive source in the logging tool can indicate whether liquids or gases are in the formation. A sonic log records the time it takes sound to travel through a formation. A sonic logging tool creates a sound that hits the formation rock near the tool. Sound moves faster through solid rock than through rock that has fluid-filled pores. The curves record the travel times and allow an expert to determine whether the rock is solid or fluid-filled. If fluid-filled, the fluid might be oil or gas. Many other logging tools are available. A common one is a caliper log. This log shows the diameter of the hole and any irregularities in it. One thing caliper logs can do is help the cementing crew determine the volume of the hole. With hole volume known, the crew knows how much cement they will need to properly cement the casing. In addition to logs, the well operator will sometimes order a drill stem test. The drill stem test, or DST, temporarily produces hydrocarbons through the rig's drill string, or stem. DSTs also measure and record formation pressure and temperature data. To determine formation permeability and the makeup of hydrocarbons, 
the well owner may run a drill stem test, DST tool. The crew runs this assembly on the drill string, or the drill stem as it's sometimes called. The test evaluates a selected test zone. Like well logging, DSTs help well owners decide whether to run casing and complete a well. A DST tool lets formation fluids flow to the surface, or sometimes into a sample chamber inside the downhole tool. While the well flows, the well owner can determine the producing characteristics of the well. Such information allows the owner to produce the well more efficiently when completed. Here's a drill stem test tool made up on the bottom of the drill stem. From top, it has a reverse circulation sub, shut-in valve, hydraulic bypass, recorder, hydraulic jar, safety joint, packer, perforated pipe, and an anchor shoe. The crew lowers this assembly to the depth the well owner wants to test. In this case, the bottom of the hole. You'll see what the parts do as you go along. The crew lowers the DST tool into the hole on the drill pipe. After the well is well circulated and conditioned with drilling fluid. The hydraulic bypass is open because the DST packer has limited clearance with the upper casing and open well bore. The open bypass allows drilling fluid in the hole to flow up inside the tool as the crew lowers it. Letting drilling fluid flow up inside the tool prevents it from creating pressure surges. Pressure surges could fracture the formation to be tested. With the DST tool on the bottom, the driller slacks off the drawworks brake to put weight on the tool. Weight causes the packer to expand. The packer seals off the hole beneath it. With the hole sealed by the expanded packer, the DST operator rotates the drill string. Rotation opens ports inside the DST tool. With the ports open, formation fluids flow into the tool and to the surface. During this time, crew members closely monitor annulus pressure. They monitor annulus pressure to make sure the packer maintains a good seal between the hole section being tested and the annulus above the packer. The test crew puts water into the drill pipe above the DST tool. This is a water cushion. The water cushion supports the drill pipe against mud pressure in the annulus until the test starts. The water cushion also puts hydrostatic pressure on the formation when the DST tool ports are open. The hydrostatic pressure is, however, not enough to keep the formation from flowing into the DST tool. The water cushion is just that, a cushion. It keeps the formation fluids from surging with great force into the tool and the drill string. If allowed to surge, the force could damage the recording instruments in the tool and the formation rock. With the ports open in the DST tool, formation fluids flow. They push any drilling fluid in the hole below the packer into the tool. Then they flow up the tool and the drill string to the surface. The test crew first lets the well flow for a short time to clear out the drill stem. They then shut in the well for a time to allow pressure to build. The well owner then allows the fluid to flow for a few hours or for several days, depending on the well. Produced fluids are caught in a holding tank or burned off as they reach the surface. During the flow period, the owner determines the well's production potential and fluid properties. After letting the well flow for the required time, the test crew closes the shut-in valve by rotating the drill string. The flow of formation fluid stops. With flow stopped, formation pressure builds up inside the tool. This pressure buildup is recorded on a pressure chart in the tool. Later, the well owner examines the chart on the surface. The record of the pressure buildup rate gives information about the permeability and size of the formation. To remove the DST tool from the hole, the driller first opens the reverse circulation sub. The driller usually opens the reverse circulation valve hydraulically, 
by pumping drilling fluid down the annulus. This increased pressure in the annulus opens the sub. With the sub open, drilling fluid reverse circulates down the annulus and up the tool and drill string to the surface. Reverse circulation pumps the remaining formation fluids out of the drill stem and puts drilling fluid back in. The drilling fluid kills the well, that is, the drilling fluid once again keeps the formation pressure under control. To pull the drill string and DST tool from the hole, the driller first releases the packer by easing up on the string. If necessary, the driller uses the built-in hydraulic jar to jar on the DST tool. In most cases, jarring loosens the packer and frees the tool. If the driller cannot pull the packer free for some reason, he can separate the tool at the safety joint. Removing the tool above the safety joint gets all of the tool above the packer, including the recorder with its data.